In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Brother and sister, our fraternal greetings to you from the Carmelite Fathers and a warm welcome to you to Carmel Light, a reflection on the day's readings. Today is 12th June and we are in the 10th week of the ordinary time. Today we celebrate the memoria of Blessed Alphonsus Maria Mazurek, a Polish Carmelite priest and martyr. It's also the World Day Against Child Labor. Let us pray that the child labor may stop and all children get equal opportunities to enjoy their childhood. Now let us listen to the Gospel of the day. Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5 verses 27 to 32. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, recently we had trouble with our generator. It wouldn't start. Then I called the technician and he found out that the rats had entered the machine and eaten up all the wires. Then I guessed that they might have made their home inside the generator. Therefore, we kept the trap to catch them and within a day we caught four rats. They got attracted to the tasty smell of the food that was in the trap and when they tried to possess it or eat it up, they got trapped in it and got killed. Our Christian life, dear friends, could be compared to these rats. We go after things which are attractive and get trapped in it. Satan or the evil one is very shrewd in his business. He knows how to mesmerize people and get them into his fold. He keeps a trap of allurement and makes us to fall into it. And once we are trapped by him, we find it hard to come out of it. He presents us things of the world and the flesh as eternal and life-giving. In fact, they are temporary and lead us to sin and death. He convinces us to see what is ugly as beautiful and what is false as true, what is insignificant as full of quality and importance and what is of no use as urgent and necessary, what is bad as good, and what is poisonous and life-threatening as the fountain of life. In the Old Testament, we know the story of Adam and Eve. Satan came to tempt them in the Garden of Eden. Eve was blinded by the alluring words of Satan. The desire to possess and taste the fruit of the tree, which was forbidden by God to eat, made them to break the commandment of God, and that is how sin entered the world. The evil one knows where is man's weak point. He knows that it is in his mind or thought, and once that point is attacked and weakened, then that will be man's downfall. Therefore, he tries to malign and poison our mind 
and take control of our decision making. Therefore, Jesus wants that man should win the evil or sin in its desire itself, which is the root cause of all sin. That's why he says, you have heard it was said, but I say to you, by saying this in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is raising the moral standard of our Christian life. The whole Sermon on the Mount is nothing but raising the moral standard of man. Jesus' morality is not staying away from a couple of evil deeds, but getting out of the evil itself. It is nothing but trying to root out the weed of sin from the mind itself. Therefore Jesus says, It was said, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with your brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. Here Jesus means that anger is the root cause of murder and many other vices. Again, he says, it was said, you shall not swear falsely, but I tell you, do not swear at all. Let your yes be yes and no be no. Anything more comes from the evil one. Here Jesus makes it clear that a Christian is called to inculcate the quality of truthfulness. Further he says, it was said, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. Jesus in a way says that repaying to an evildoer is not your job. The vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and therefore he will take care of it. And again he says, it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who harm you. By doing this, we become the children of our Father in heaven. Jesus is calling us to forgive and forget and make friendship with everyone. Dear friends, in today's Gospel, Jesus is speaking about adultery. For Jesus, adultery is not just a physical act, but the corruption of the mind. The act begins in the mind itself and therefore one has to be careful not to allow the cancer called the desire to enter the mind. If one thinks immoral things in the mind, and contemplates on them, then that becomes the starting point for adultery. Purity of mind is the guarantee for pure actions. Therefore, we need to work hard to feed, nourish and cultivate the faculties of the soul, which are intellect and the will, with the heavenly things then our mind will always think of pure things and lead us to holy actions. Dear friends, today let us make a promise to Jesus that we will use our God-given senses to see all that is good and beautiful in the sight of God, to taste all that is spiritual, to smell the heavenly perfume of sanctity, to hear nothing but the word of God and to feel the touch of nothing but of the Holy Spirit. Let us keep our surrounding atmosphere of our Christian life clean and pure and let no virus enter our mind and suffocate our Christian life. Amen. The Responsorial Psalm The response is I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks. You my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. 
cast me not off. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending the wisdom, your word, Jesus Christ, as our Savior. He has taught us to lead a life of purity and truthfulness. Send us the Spirit to follow the true Christian way so that we may become your image and likeness in the world. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we thank Reverend Father Lancy Lewis for sharing his reflection on the Word of God today. And also, we thank you for joining us in Carmel Light. We would like to remember all those who are celebrating their birthday and we would like to wish you all a happy birthday and pray for God's blessings. Especially Roshan Sikwera from Mumbai, presently Dubai, Dolphy Pinto from Karkal, Rudolf Pinto from Karkal, Melrick Paula from Attur Karkal, Swizzle Melina Fernandez from Padukon, Mary Alva from Padubelle Pambur. Happy birthday once again. God bless you. We also pray for the departed souls of John Dennis Monis from Bantakal Pambur, Joachim Morris from Gurupur, Baptist Fernandez from Mumbai. May the Lord grant you eternal rest. Brothers and sisters, thank you for being with us in reflecting on the Word of God. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.